this video, we're going to cover how to write code in Excel VBA that allows you to filter data sets based on criteria you specify. We're going to begin with a single criteria filter, then move on to an OR criteria filter and an AND criteria filter with multiple columns, and then we're going to show how to copy that filtered data to a new spreadsheet on your same workbook. So you can see here in this example, I have a data set of loan detail records and one of the columns has different branch locations. So in this first example, what I want to do is create a filter in VBA that filters based on branch number two only. So to go into the VBA editor window, I'm going to hit Alt F11. Anywhere in this project window, I'm going to right click, go to insert and then module. We'll call this subroutine my filter. And the first thing we want to do is declare some variables. First one we'll call WB for workbook. It's going to be as the data type workbook. The next one is going to be WS for worksheet. It's going to be as the data type worksheet. This workbook is going to represent the workbook we're in now. This worksheet variable is going to represent the sheet containing the data we want to filter, which is called the loans worksheet. We're eventually going to add a new worksheet. So I'm going to copy this and just call this NWS for new worksheet. And at some point, we're going to need to get the last row in our data set that contains values. So I'm going to declare a variable called last row. And it's going to be as the data type long because it just represents the row number. So the first thing I want to do is set up our workbook variable. So I'm going to use the keyword set because this is an object variable. And this is going to be equal to this workbook. Next, I'm going to set up our worksheet. That is going to be equal to our workbook variable we just created. And then worksheets. And loans is the name of our sheet. So the first thing we want to do here is just a simple filter on branch number two in column E. I'm going to reference our worksheet variable. and we want to reference uh, any cell in that column. Usually the rule of thumb is to use the first cell. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but most folks use the first cell, so we'll use cell E1. We want to use the auto filter method and it has some inputs. So the first thing we need to specify is the field number. So that is the fifth column, column E, so that's going to be field number five. After that, we have our first criteria. So that's going to be criteria number one, and that is going to be equal to branch two. So one thing I kind of want to go ahead and do right now, since we're going to be doing multiple examples here, is once we've run the macro, I want to clear out the filter so we can do more filters. So I'm going to reference our worksheet variable again and then use a method called show all data that will clear our filter. So I'm going to F8 through this one line at a time. It won't take that long because there's not that many lines. So now once I execute this line of code, you should see column E get filtered on branch two. And there it is. So now when I execute this line of code, it will clear our filter again. And we're back to where we started. So now what I want to do is add an OR condition. I want to filter on branches two and three in that same column. So I'm going to add a comma here and I'm running out of space here so I'm going to hit space and then underscore and that will allow us to continue our code on a new line. So 
The next input we need to do since we're dealing with multiple criteria is operator and we need to specify what type of operator we have. In this case it's an OR so we want XL OR and then a comma and then we have our criteria number two which is branch number three. So now we'll F8 through this again and we should see a filter on branches two and three. And there it is. So now what we want to do is add a second filter on a second column. Maybe we want to see branches two and three, but only loans where the loan amount is between a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars. So since we're dealing with a completely different column here, I'm going to have to reference this again because I need to refer to a cell in that column. So I'm going to copy that code and change this to our column C. And likewise, our field is going to be 3. So we have criteria one where it is greater than or equal to a hundred thousand. I'm gonna hit space and underscore again because I'm running out of code. And we need to specify our operator again. So this time we have an AND condition. So that's XL AND. And we have our criteria 2 for this column. And that is going to be equal to anything that is less than or equal to $200,000. So I'll F8 through this, and what we should see now is branches two and three, and then anything between a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars. So there are the branches filter, and now there is the amount filter. So now I'm going to execute this to clear our filters. So now what we want to do is perform the same filters but copy our filter data to a new worksheet so what I want to do up here up where we set our first object variables is define our last row variable because that represents the last row of values in this data set here on our worksheet so I'm going to reference our worksheet variable and then cells and that has a row index and a column index. For our row index we want to use rows because that reflects multiple rows and we want to count all of the rows on our spreadsheet and we want to reference one for our column index because we always know there's going to be a value in column one or column A. So this will essentially take us down to the last row at the very bottom of our spreadsheet all the way down to the last possible row. From there what we want to do is end Excel up because that's the equivalent of control up arrow that will take us to the last row containing values. From there we want to return that row number and so we store that row number in this last row variable. So now what we want to do on our worksheet variable with range A1 which is our headers and we know this goes through column E what we're gonna do is join this range reference 
to our last row variable. And we're going to use something called, it's a method called special cells. And we want to use cell type visible. I'm going to expand this so we can see what we're doing here. And then we want to copy, use the copy method because we want to only copy visible cells that are in our filter. So now what we want to do is set up our new worksheet variable. So I'm going to use the keyword set and then reference our new worksheet. And that is going to be equal to this workbook and then worksheets. And what we want to use is the add method that will add a new worksheet. So with this new worksheet, we want to reference cells and paste special and paste values and number formats. Now I know already I'm going to need to auto fit the columns once they're pasted so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll reference our new worksheet again and reference columns and then auto fit. So we'll F8 through this one line of code at a time. So we have our first filter and then our second filter on column C. And then we're going to copy that filter data. We're going to set our new workbook, or sorry, worksheet variable. So we added a new worksheet and then we're going to paste that filter data in there and then auto fit. And it's a little hard to see. I can blow it up here, but there is that filter data on our new worksheet. So that is how you can create code to apply different filters on your data set and copy them to new worksheets. Hey, if you like what you saw, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.